Since it's Halloween, let's talk about random monsters. Specifically, let's talk about unexpected horror and supernatural elements in construction games. This is something I've noticed and wanted to talk about for a while. Nearly every popular construction game that you see has horror elements in it, even if it doesn't look like it should. Obviously, there are horror-themed construction games these days, too, but I'm talking about the ones that don't seem like they should have horror elements. For example, Dwarf Fortress. It's all about building up a castle and fighting off dragons and stuff, except it's also very horrific. If you dig deep enough, you get a randomized random monster to come by and eat all of your dwarves. Also, the descriptions of injuries and the way that they linger is really unsettling. And we can keep going with RimWorld, which is a game about building solar panels and shooting at raiders, but it's also full of xenomorphs that do what xenomorphs do, and it's also got a lot of things like psychic powers and slavery and harvesting people's organs. How about Amazing Cultivation Simulator? There is nothing sinister about that game at all. It is one of the most visually lighthearted of the construction games that you're going to find. Oh yeah, except for if you start with any animal people in your village, um, they will turn into monsters and kill you. And also, you have to harvest people's souls to advance, and you have to worship an evil plant, and I mean literally, like, build a cult and worship it, uh, and the end game is a horror-style mind screw. Hmm. How about The Sims? That's wholesome-ish, right? Uh, sure, there's things like the Werewolf Expansion Pack, but that's not really unexpected horror, is it? But I think a lot of people forget that The Sims has ghosts and skeletal, skeletal reapers. And sure, those might seem pretty tame today, but they don't make a lot of sense in the, uh, you know, the world of The Sims. And that's putting aside things like, oh yeah, your Sim was cooking dinner, so all of your Sims burned to death. And we can go on. Even Animal Crossing has some horror elements in it. All of these horror elements are inflicted by the game on the player. And of course, we could also talk about the ones that the player inflicts on the game. Like The Sims is renowned for how much horror it lets you pack into something like locking someone in a closet. And Animal Crossing is also renowned for its horror turnarounds as well. Why do so many of these games feature horror elements either coming or going? Why do so many people want to turn these into horror games, both on the dev side and on the player side? Why? Well, let's talk about it. I think that there are three main reasons. I think the first reason, streamers, or, you know, just let's players in general. Streamers love to have something to react to. Surprise horror elements give them a double, you know, double decker. They can be surprised and they can also be horrified. Alternately, they can be unsurprised and unhorrified and impress their audience with how awful they have made the game world for the characters within the game world. Either way, the streamers are being given glorious fodder whenever a game has surprise horror elements. This, of course, also goes the other way. The streamers can create the horror if they need to, and they frequently do. Uh, any given streamer streaming The Sims will be streaming a horror game, guaranteed. But the point here is this gives the streams a lot of punch. The streamers have something to react to, and that means that these games can get popular. So the reason that popular games tend to have horror elements in them is because streamers like horror. They can work with that. I think the second thing about this is Sim Flab. With the explosion of computing power that we've seen, 
a lot of simulation games, especially indie simulation games, have taken to simulating ridiculous amounts of things that just don't need to be simulated. Why do you need to simulate the fat layer on everybody's fingers? That makes no sense. Why is every single fat layer on every single f finger being simulated independently? Because they can. Well, it works a little bit more strangely than that. These simulations have no merit in terms of the core gameplay. You're never going to need to know exactly which pieces of flesh have been damaged in which way for the core gameplay of something like RimWorld or Dwarf Fortress. But if someone gets injured, the game can now show you a visceral display of that injury. Here it is, all censored out for YouTube. It's Halloween. Uh, look at all this horror. And, uh, you know, it can tell you that something awful happened and just just the worst. Look at this man. All of his flesh was burned away. His bones are sticking out. Blah. Whatever. It can do that because of this ridiculous simulation. The simulation has no meaning to the rest of the game. It exists solely to sell the player on the horror of the injuries that happen in the game. But monsters can also use this same SimFlab. So if you are simulating things like bones separately from flesh, then you can have the Bone Reaper who comes around to steal everybody's bones. And, uh, you know, that means that you're using a system that is built into the game already to do something that the player never expected because the player can't do it. The player can't steal anybody's bones. So they didn't expect that any of the creatures in the game would be able to steal anybody's bones. But they can, because the simulation allows it. And you've turned something that was way too much random simulation that doesn't matter into something that does matter, because this monster uses that simulation layer. Dwarf Fortress's randomized creatures do this a lot. They have uh, just abilities that are so overwhelming that the characters within the game frequently suffer wow, just the most horrific possible injuries because of these. For example, they've got monster breath that might peel the skin right off you or melt your flab or whatever else. And those are obviously truly horrific monsters to face. And it works within the game because the game has that layer of simulation that shouldn't be there, but since it's there, you might as well use it to inflict horror. Now, this doesn't have to be horrific. Lots of games have simulation that doesn't make sense, just a layer of simulation that the game does not need. And they often use it to simulate something more innocuous. For example, in SimCity, you might suddenly get hit with a flood or a meteor. This plays the same role as a monster, and you get to see the city struggle to adapt to roads suddenly being missing or a power plant suddenly going down. The third thing I think that we see with these horror elements is uh, non-simps. Just things that don't happen within the simulation. These are threats that exist outside the simulation and the player more or less just has to cope. This also works because of the over-the-top level of simulations the game has. The game is like, look at all this stuff I'm simulating, and you're like, ooh, I want to master it, and then you master it, and the game says, oh look, over here, a thing that ignores your simulation. This also doesn't always have to be monsters. For example, in RimWorld, disease is nonsense. You can't really do anything about it. You can sort of decrease how lethal it is by having doctors on hand and stuff, but you can't really do anything about it. If you get hit with disease in RimWorld, you're just screwed. All of these three factors combine really make me think that this is the beating heart of why games like this work. You've got all of the excess simulation that you don't normally use during ordinary play being used by something extraordinary. You've got all of that simulation you can master 
being ignored for something that you can't master. And then you've got someone who can share it around and say, look how scary or surprising this is. None of this requires horror, but it is something that is easiest to do with horror. People will naturally gravitate towards horror implementations of this. And I don't think that's bad necessarily, but I do think it's worth doing it on purpose. I think if you understand the role that monsters have, or surprise has in your game, you might be able to make it so that it works better than the current set of games which seem to do it mostly on accident. I think that it would be really fun to do a deep dive into any given game and discuss how to use these three factors to try and make the game pop. Anyway, that's it. Have a good Halloween!